Saudi Arabia is rapidly rethinking its foreign policy in the wake of the war. Saudi officials have given strong warnings against the ground invasion of Gaza. During recent discussions with U.S. representatives, Saudi leadership emphasized the disastrous consequences that could befall Israel if it proceeds with a ground assault on Hamas. With ongoing protests in multiple Middle Eastern countries, the rising death toll in Gaza, and the warning from Saudi, people are asking, are we on the verge of the biggest war in the Middle East? Will this be the end of the Saudi-Israeli normalization deal? The Arabs have shown clearly, have shown that they are serious, have shown that they are willing to engage. We are ready. We hope that we can do it soon. Join us to learn how Saudi Arabia warns the U.S. to stop Israel or they'll take action. Only a few months ago, the U.S. was on the verge of securing one of the most iconic deals for two of its biggest allies in the Middle East, Israel and Saudi Arabia. The deal could have caused a tectonic shift in Middle East geopolitics and had significant implications for other actors beyond the three negotiating parties. A normalization deal with Saudi Arabia had long been viewed as a highly desirable achievement for Israel. It would have not only advanced Israel's interests, but also strengthened Saudi Arabia's partnership with the United States and enhanced its national security. However, the start of the Israel-Hamas war, initiated by the Hamas attack on October 7, 2023, brought about a change in circumstances. Israel quickly responded by declaring war on the Islamic extremist group and launching several airstrikes on the Gaza Strip. As the war enters its fourth week, the Palestinian death toll has surpassed 9,000, causing concerns among international bodies and human rights organizations. Saudi Arabia has unexpectedly taken a strong stand different from what Israel or the United States had anticipated. Keep watching to find out what Saudi authorities say about the normalization deal and why United States officials were told to warn Israel. But to begin, let's briefly look at how this terrifying war started. Islamic militants from Gaza launched an onslaught of rockets towards Israeli towns in the early hours of Saturday, October 7th. They managed to breach the heavily fortified border fence with Israel, infiltrating deep into Israeli territory. This act led to a tragic loss of life, with Hamas gunmen reportedly responsible for the deaths of over 1,400 individuals, including both civilians and soldiers. Israeli authorities have described this horrifying incident as the most devastating massacre of Jews since the Holocaust. It has been more than seven decades since Israel last confronted its enemy in street battles on its own soil during the 1948 Arab-Israeli War. The country has also never before endured a terror attack of such magnitude, resulting in the tragic deaths of numerous innocent civilians. While Hamas has previously carried out the kidnapping of Israelis, this is the first instance in which they have taken dozens of hostages simultaneously, including vulnerable children and elderly individuals. Termed Al-Aqsa Storm by Hamas, this operation was purportedly launched in response to what they perceive as Israeli aggression against women, the desecration of the revered Al-Aqsa Mosque in Jerusalem, and the ongoing blockade of Gaza. In response, Israel swiftly declared war and initiated Operation Swords of Iron. The military campaign primarily targets Hamas and Islamic Jihad installations within Gaza. As part of its response, Israel has also adopted measures to disrupt the supply lines of essential commodities to the population in Gaza, including fuel and water. Intent on exacting a heavy toll on Hamas for their dreadful attack, Israel has amassed an impressive force of over 300,000 reservists along the Gaza border, poised for a potential ground incursion. The United Nations reports that the Israel Defense Forces, IDF, have instructed over one million residents in northern Gaza to evacuate southward. However, some individuals express concerns that there is no safe haven to seek refuge, especially considering that crossings out of Gaza have been sealed. In a countermove, Hamas has urged the Gazan population to remain in their homes, accusing Israel of employing psychological warfare by compelling Palestinians to relocate. Adding further complexity to Israel's response is the alarming situation of the hostages held by Hamas. The militant group claims that several hostages have already fallen victim to Israeli airstrikes on the enclave, although Israeli officials have neither confirmed nor refuted this claim. While four hostages have been released by Hamas in recent days, 
Israeli authorities estimate that more than 200 individuals still remain missing, and their fate is uncertain. At this point, Israeli forces have killed over 9,061 Palestinians and about 32,000 wounded within the Gaza Strip. The Saudi government is deeply concerned about this, which led to the recent harsh decision which we will discuss in a moment. Israel, on the other hand, is reportedly preparing for a ground operation against Hamas that carries the potential for prolonged conflict and significant casualties. The country's defense minister has stated that the military is organizing a multilateral operation involving air, ground, and sea forces with the objective of eradicating the militant group. On Friday, Israel announced an expansion of its ground operations in the Gaza Strip, accompanied by intense airstrikes and entry into the enclave, according to reports from Gazans. The full scope of the operation remains uncertain at this time. In response, Hamas has declared its readiness for all possible scenarios, including the possibility of an Israeli ground attack. Tensions are also running high in the occupied West Bank, where the Palestinian Health Ministry has reported over 100 Palestinian deaths since the October 7th incident. Residents in the West Bank have also expressed fears of increased violence from Israeli military and security forces, as well as retaliatory attacks from the estimated 700,000 Israeli settlers residing in the area. What really is Hamas? Hamas, an Islamist organization, has been a prominent player in the Palestinian political landscape since its emergence in 1987. Stemming from the Muslim Brotherhood, a Sunni Islamist group founded in the late 1920s in Egypt, Hamas shares the belief held by many Palestinian factions and political parties that Israel is an occupying power. Its mission revolves around liberating the Palestinian territories and establishing an independent state viewing Israel as an illegitimate entity that should be dismantled. What sets Hamas apart from some other Palestinian factions is its steadfast refusal to engage with Israel. This was evident in its opposition to the Oslo Accords in 1993, a historic peace agreement between Israel and the Palestine Liberation Organization, PLO. The Accords signaled a shift towards a potential resolution by the PLO, renouncing armed resistance in exchange for the promise of a Palestinian state alongside Israel. Furthermore, the Accords led to the establishment of the Palestinian Authority, PA, in the Israeli-occupied West Bank. Hamas positions itself as an alternative to the PA, which has recognized Israel and participated in multiple unsuccessful peace initiatives. Led by President Mahmoud Abbas, the PA's credibility among Palestinians has waned over the years. Hamas, on the other hand, has carried out numerous attacks on Israel and has garnered the designation of a terrorist organization from the United States, the European Union, and Israel. Gaza, a narrow strip of land bordering Israel and Egypt, serves as Hamas's stronghold. This coastal enclave has witnessed several transitions of power over the past seven decades. The vast majority of Gaza's inhabitants are descendants of refugees who were displaced or forced to flee their homes in 1948 during the establishment of Israel. Another ally of Hamas is the Palestinian Islamic Jihad, PIJ, an offshoot of the Muslim Brotherhood. Although smaller in scale compared to Hamas, the PIJ has conducted numerous attacks on Israel since the 1980s and operates primarily in Israel, Gaza, and the West Bank. Estimates suggest that the PIJ's membership ranges from 1,000 to several thousand fighters. According to the United States, the Israeli airstrikes, which have been deemed by many as disproportionate, have resulted in widespread destruction and loss of life. As the conflict persists, the humanitarian situation in Gaza has deteriorated rapidly. Efforts to provide aid to the affected population have been hindered by the ongoing hostilities. While a limited number of aid trucks have been allowed entry through the Rafah crossing, United Nations officials emphasize that much more assistance is urgently needed to address the basic needs of the people in Gaza. The healthcare system is overwhelmed, and hospitals are struggling to cope with the influx of injured civilians. Power shortages have compelled medical facilities and residents to rely on generators, but the dwindling fuel supply poses a grave threat to their operations. In the occupied West Bank, Palestinians have taken to the streets of central Nablus to voice their opposition to the Israeli air attack on the Jabalia refugee camp. The bombing has sparked outrage and calls for action from humanitarian groups, who argue that it should serve as a wake-up call to world leaders to secure an immediate ceasefire. 
The use of force against civilian populations and refugee camps has raised international concern over the humanitarian impact and the necessity for an urgent resolution to the conflict. What is the take of the United States in all this? In spite of political disagreements that occasionally strained the relationship between Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and U.S. President Joe Biden, the recent outbreak of war in Gaza has underscored the enduring bond between the U.S. and Israel. Over the past few weeks, U.S. officials have reiterated their unwavering backing for Israel in diplomatic, financial, and military aspects. Biden, who has previously voiced criticism against Netanyahu's right-wing government, made a clear statement during a White House address recently. We stand with Israel, and we will make sure Israel has what it needs to take care of its citizens, defend itself, and respond to this attack. Standing alongside Netanyahu, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken declared, You may be strong enough on your own to defend yourself, but as long as America exists, you will never ever have to. We will always be there by your side. Arab countries, including those previously allied with the United States and maintaining peaceful relations with Israel, have expressed growing dissatisfaction with the ongoing war. Jordan, in response to the situation, has recalled its ambassador from Israel, and it has instructed Israel's envoy to stay out of the country until the situation is handled. This move by Jordan reflects the mounting pressure on Israel to bring an end to the conflict and highlights the regional concerns surrounding the situation. As tensions escalate and the humanitarian crisis worsens, the international community faces an urgent challenge to address the immediate needs of the affected population and work towards a sustainable ceasefire to prevent further loss of life and ensure the provision of essential aid. And here's where Saudi Arabia comes in. Where does Saudi Arabia stand? And how does it affect the normalization deal with Israel? Ten influential senators recently traveled to Riyadh, the capital of Saudi Arabia, to meet with Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman, the de facto ruler of the kingdom. Among these senators was Senator Richard Blumenthal, a prominent Democrat hailing from Connecticut and a member of the Armed Services Committee. The discussions held during this meeting, shrouded in intrigue and high-stakes diplomacy, carry significant implications for the volatile Middle East region. At the heart of these discussions lies a growing concern, the possibility of a ground invasion in the Gaza Strip. The Saudi leadership is hopeful that an invasion by Israel can be averted, citing reasons for regional stability and the minimization of human loss. Their concerns are well-founded, as a ground invasion has the potential to unleash a catastrophic chain of events that could reverberate throughout the entire region. In fact, these concerns have not remained behind closed doors. Senior Saudi officials have expressed more strong warnings directly to their American counterparts. They have voiced genuine fears that a ground invasion could have far-reaching and devastating consequences. This uncertain situation unfolded based on the escalating tensions in the Gaza Strip. Israel had initiated a campaign involving bombardments and a blockade in retaliation for attacks by Hamas, a militant Palestinian organization that effectively controls Gaza. The urgency of the situation cannot be overstated, as necessities like fuel and water are becoming increasingly scarce, casting a grim shadow over the lives of the Gazan people. The Biden administration in the United States has maintained a consistent stance of support for Israel's right to self-defense. President Biden unequivocally stated, let there be no doubt the United States stands with Israel. However, within the context of the recent Gaza conflict, the United States, under the guidance of President Biden, urged Israel to postpone any potential ground invasion. There were several reasons behind this diplomatic intervention. It was seen as an opportunity to allow more time for the delicate negotiations for the release of hostages and to increase the humanitarian aid that could reach Gaza. Additionally, there was an emphasis on the improvement of the overall war strategy. The Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu also held reservations about the prospect of an invasion. Diplomacy emerged as the primary focus of Crown Prince Mohammed bin Salman and President Biden, who concurred on the need for broader diplomatic initiatives aimed at preserving stability across the region. Their shared objective was to prevent the ongoing conflict from escalating further. Their alignment was evident during a recent conversation, the details of which were released in a statement by the White House. 
although the statement did not explicitly mention discussions concerning a ground invasion. This diplomatic maneuvering follows a period of tense relations between Prince Mohammed and President Biden, prompted by exploratory talks surrounding the potential recognition of Israel by Saudi Arabia and the establishment of diplomatic ties. While prominent advisors to President Biden expressed enthusiasm for such an agreement, heralding it as a transformational event in the Middle East, they also acknowledged the intricate challenges posed by the diplomatic process. Traditionally, some Arab administrations, including Saudi Arabia, had refrained from establishing diplomatic relations with Israel before the establishment of a Palestinian state. However, the geopolitical landscape has shifted over the past decade. Autocratic leaders in the region have recalibrated their calculations, weighing the potential security and economic advantages of a closer relationship with Israel. Additionally, they've considered the potential benefits they could accrue from the United States in exchange for their diplomatic overtures. The Abraham Accords, mediated by the Trump administration, marked a significant milestone in this evolving landscape. Bahrain, Morocco, and the United Arab Emirates established diplomatic relations with Israel in 2020, despite the unpopularity of these treaties, which has grown over time. The Israeli government's rightward shift and the expansion of settlements in the West Bank have exacerbated this sentiment. The Biden administration's negotiations with Saudi Arabia, as a political heavyweight in the Arab world, have been more intricate and multifaceted than previous discussions. Saudi officials emphasized their willingness to normalize relations with Israel, but emphasized that the United States should offer commensurate benefits. These benefits include increased arms sales, a mutual defense pact between the two countries, and American support for a Saudi civilian nuclear program. In these negotiations, the question of whether Israel would make concessions to the Palestinians also came to the fore. In a recent interview with Fox News, Prince Muhammad appeared to suggest that achieving Palestinian statehood was not a realistic goal. This stance underscores the complex nature of these diplomatic negotiations, where long-standing regional issues intersect with the dynamics of contemporary geopolitics. The Gaza conflict has been marked by its tragic human toll. The Gaza Health Ministry publicly disclosed the identities of 6,747 individuals out of over 9,000 persons who have died since the onset of the conflict. Alarmingly, 281 more bodies remain unidentified. The scale of this loss of life has triggered protests across the Middle East as demonstrators express their anger towards Israel and the United States. These protests decry Israel's blockade and call for an immediate ceasefire. Publicly, Saudi officials have maintained a narrative centered around the ambitious vision of transforming Saudi Arabia into a major international financial hub. However, the private conversations and phone calls between Saudi and U.S. officials have revealed a different, more candid message. Senator Lindsey Graham, who played a key role in organizing the visit to Saudi Arabia, noted that Crown Prince Mohammed and other Saudi officials conveyed a sense of urgency and concern regarding Hamas's attacks on Israel. While the Crown Prince recognizes these attacks as acts of terror, he appeals for a measured response that avoids further intensifying the conflict. Experts have raised cautionary flags about Israel's promise to completely destroy Hamas, warning that such an approach could fuel radicalism and violence, ultimately amplifying the sense of Palestinian oppression under Israeli rule. An invasion might also inject instability into neighboring nations, particularly Egypt and Jordan, whose governments already grapple with unrest due to economic challenges and political repression. Moreover, Iran has historically supported Hamas, and the reactions of Iran-backed anti-Israel regional militias would be contingent on Israel's military response. These militias have pledged to open new fronts in the conflict, with Saudi Arabia potentially in their crosshairs. Throughout the conflict, Saudi authorities have repeatedly emphasized their support for the establishment of a Palestinian state, with Jerusalem as its capital, and for a meaningful peace process between Israel and the Palestinians. Saudi Foreign Minister Prince Faisal bin Farhan explicitly stated that, we can never have real peace and stability in the area if we are not willing to face all of the obstacles, all of the hurdles, all of the history that is involved in this issue. It appears that American and Saudi leaders are determined to explore the potential for normalization with Israel, despite the escalating bloodshed. 
The somewhat tenuous connections between the United States and Saudi Arabia, separated by a 22-mile drive across Jordan, would have remained largely covert if not for the official visit by the group of senators. According to their accounts, Saudi authorities expressed a clear preference for recognizing Israel at an opportune moment. Normalization with Israel is often portrayed by Israeli and American officials as a strategic move to contain Iran, a notable adversary of Saudi Arabia in the region. This strategic maneuver is particularly significant as Saudi Arabia endeavors to counter the influence of Houthi rebels in Yemen, who continue to maintain a stronghold despite receiving support from Iran. Prince Muhammad's approach to diversifying the oil-dependent Saudi economy has focused on reconciliation and building bridges. This has been manifested through the restoration of diplomatic ties with Iran earlier this year. However, as Senator Blumenthal notes, the feasibility of a Saudi-Israeli agreement remains contingent on the conclusion of Israel's current military operations. During a recent conversation between Prince Mohammed and President Biden, the two leaders underscored the importance of working towards a lasting peace between Israel and the Palestinians once the situation stabilizes. This commitment aligns with the broader goal of fostering a stable, prosperous, and integrated Middle East region, a goal that includes both normalization and the advancement of a two-state solution, as articulated by the U.S. State Department. Thanks for watching another episode of Beyond Discovery. While you're still here, click on the other videos you see on your screen right now.